So I was looking again at these soup and spark experiments from the 1950s where Urey and Miller, they created these trace amino acids in these, this series of beakers and, and different uh, electri electric shocks hitting these different methane gases and such. And my buddy declared that uh, indeed we have created life in a laboratory. I said, well, wait a minute. A trace amino acid is far from life. So I actually gave him this example. I said, I mean, it's pretty, rather a gruesome example, but let's take a frog, let's throw him in a blender, all right? Let's whip him up to kind of a frothy consistency of, of, of base amino acids, proteins, basically all the elements needed for life, all the chemical bases you need for life. Let's get it to a nice frothy kind of green and red and white gushy mix. Let's take this, uh, this uh, beaker, let's throw it out in the sun for, oh, let's say, give or take 18, 19 million years, and let's watch the sun hit it, radiation hit it, wind blow over it, and uh, let's come back in that uh, 18, 19 million years and see what we've got. Basically what you've got is these same trace amino acids and proteins and chemicals. You don't have life. So I just kind of took them around to this again and said, uh, uh, do you have a frog? I said, no, you've still got a frothy mess. I said, well, that's basically what you've got when you create a single amino acid or two amino acids in a laboratory somewhere. You're far from life.